this is Johan and welcome. In this episode, I would love to share this tote bag quilt as you go project. If you are a quilter, you may be very familiar with the term quilt as you go, which refers to a technique where you piece the patchwork right away on the quilt batting. I love doing this technique to make smaller projects like coaster, placemat, or cushion cover, and of course, a tote bag. So the measurement of this bag is about 13 inches by 11 inches. There are some pockets inside, so two slip pockets and one zipper pocket, and simple magnetic snap closure. And this is how it looks at the back. This is a great scrap boosting project. Feel free to experiment, have fun with your fabric choice. If you have questions, don't hesitate to ask me in the comment section down below or you can also reach out to me through social media. I am on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest as well. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. To make the patchwork, you're gonna need a piece of quilt batting. Since we are going to make a 12 inch squares block, you're gonna need to cut your quilt batting a slight larger than that. Then you will also need some scraps of fabric, and I cut my scraps into various size strips and various lengths as well. Some are shorter and some are longer. Now you want to start by sewing the smaller size strips. So I've got this little fabric here. Now I'm going to place this right on the center and I'm going to stitch this or in fact quilt this. So I'm going to put a little pin here to keep this in place. Then I simply run some straight-ish stitches. They're about half an inch apart and I use the edges of my presser foot as the gauge. I'm using regular presser foot here but if you're more comfortable using walking foot you can do that as well. Now I'm gonna take the second strip and then I'm going to lay that right side together with my first strip in a slight angle where the second strip is actually overlapping the first strip just like what I'm showing you here. And then I'm going to sew along the edges of the second strip with about a quarter of an inch of seam allowance. I'm still using a regular presser foot here, however, I move the needle all the way to the right and then I use the edges of my presser foot as the gauge. You can also use your quarter inch foot if that's what you prefer. Open up the strip and then give that a finger press a little bit. Then I'm gonna go ahead and run a couple more straight stitches in place. Trim the excess fabric off and then I'm gonna take another fabric. I think I'm gonna use this one and I will place this fabric right here. Again, I will overlap this and sort of put it in an angle. Then I'm gonna go and stitch this in place. Again, I'm gonna open this up and then finger press that and run a couple more stitches to quilt this in place. Continue sewing and build your block until it measures a little over than 12 inches across. Now trim your block to measure 12 inches squares. Alright, so here I've got my first block ready and this will be for the front exterior. Now I'm going to make another one for the back exterior. So here I've got two 12 inch squares ready for the front and back exterior shells. Now whenever I make a bag where I use quilt batting, I usually like to add an extra layer of fabric at the back of the batting, just like quilt backing so to speak. So simply use like scraps of fabric or muslin or cheap cotton fabric. This will help to add a little extra body to the bag without making it too bulky. But this is optional. If you are happy with the quilt batting itself, you can skip this process. 
To keep the backing fabric in place, I simply use the spray basting. Now I'm going to curve the bottom part of this exterior shell. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to fold this in half just like so and then I'm going to use my curve ruler. If you don't have this, you can use any round shape object like plate or bowl, something like that. So I position my ruler around the bottom corner just like so and then I'm going to take my rotary cutter and cut. You can also draw the line first and then cut afterwards, whatever more makes sense for you. Now I'm going to lay this on top of my back exterior shell, then trace the bottom curved lines with my rotary cutter. I'm going to take one of the exterior shell as a template to cut the lining. And of course you're going to need to cut two of these. To determine the size of the gussette for this bag, you're going to need to measure the perimeter of the side and the bottom of the bag. I simply use my measuring tape here. So my measurement turned out to be 32 and a quarter here. So I'm going to round it up to 33 inches. It is better to cut it a bit longer so you can always trim it rather than too short. So here I've got my gussette already cut accordingly. So the length of this strip is 33 inches according to my measurement and the width is 4 inches. I also interface this with the fusible fleece that I cut a little bit smaller. I cut the fusible fleece only 3 inches wide and place that right on the center so there should be about half an inch gap on both sides. This way it will not be too bulky when sewing this later. Now I'm going to attach this cassette to the front exterior shell of this bag. So I'm going to first find the half point of this cassette. So simply fold it in half and then snip a little bit there. And I'm going to find the half point of the bottom of my front exterior shell and snip that as well. So I'm matching those notches that I just created and then place a fabric clip there. So you want to go ahead and secure this with either fabric clips or pins all around the bottom and the side. Now when you get to the curvy area, you may want to snip the edges of your gusset a little bit. This will help to make the gusset to lay more flat. Simply use your scissors and snip about quarter inch from the edges, just like what I'm showing you here. Now go ahead and sew all around with half an inch of seam allowance. So I switched to my walking foot. Um, this is my favorite presser foot when it comes to constructing my back. When you get to the corner here, you simply want to flatten up the edges a little bit. It may get a little bunchy right here around your hand, but it's okay as long as the edges are kept flat. So you're going to end up with something like this. Now I'm going to turn this to the right side for now and then trim off the excess gusset. Now take the back exterior shell and attach that to the other side of the gusset. Pretty much the same way you did the front exterior. Secure everything with the fabric clips and then go ahead and sew with half an inch of seam allowance. So you want to make sure that when you sew this, you want to have the gusset facing up. Snip a little bit around the curvy area. This will help the seams of your back to lay more flat when you turn the back inside out. You want to be careful not to cut through the stitches though. Now we're going to make the strap. So prepare your strap pieces. Here I've got a strip of fabric measuring 24 by 4 inches. You can go longer or shorter, it's totally up to you. I also fused this with fusible fleece that I cut only 2 inches wide and 23 inches long. And then I fused this right on the center so you've got an inch gap on both sides and half an inch gap on each end of the strap. 
fold the end of your strap in about half an inch and press and you want to do the same with the other side as well fold the edges towards the center and press and you want to do the same with the other side now you want to fold everything in half and press now go ahead and sew all along the edges with 1 8 of an inch of seam allowance Measure 2 inches from the end of your strap and then put a little mark there and you want to do the same with the other side. If you notice right now that I am measuring 4 inches from the end of the strap, simply ignore that. I wasn't really sure initially where to place the strap. Fold the strap in half and then go ahead and stitch along the edges starting from the first mark and end it up right where the second mark is. You may want to use heavy duty needle such as denim size needle or the macrotex needle since this part that you're sewing is quite bulky. Obviously you will need to make two straps for the back. Measure 2 inches from the side seam and put a little mark there and you want to do the same with the other side as well. And then position your strap where you put the mark which is 2 inches away from the side seam. And the end of the strap should be 2 inches away from the top. So I'm using my sewing gauge here and measure 2 inches from the top and place the end of the strap where the 2 inch point is. Then I'm going to secure the strap in place with some fabric clips. Then you want to do the same with the other end of the strap. Measure an inch from the bottom and then mark a horizontal line just like so. And then you want to draw the X line or diagonal lines just like shown here. And then go ahead and sew following those lines. So for the bottom and the sides, I simply follow the seam lines of the strap. So here I've got all of my straps already stitched in place and as you can see here since I initially stitched my strap 4 inches away from the bottom it wasn't looking proportional so I stitched all the way down up to 2 inches from the end of the strap. Now we're gonna move on and work on the back interior starting from the slip pocket so lay your slip pockets right side together and then sew the top and the bottom with quarter inch of seam allowance. Once you've done that, go ahead and press the seams open. Turn your pocket piece inside out and then give this another quick press and then you're going to top stitch along the upper top. Place your slip pocket piece on the right side of your lining piece about 2.5 inch away from the top. Then go ahead and sew right on the center and the bottom as well. And you're going to end up with something like this. Now we're going to work on the zipper pocket. So from the wrong side of your zipper pocket piece, draw a 6 by half an inch of rectangle. Then you want to draw a horizontal line on the center and diagonal lines on the corners, just like shown here. And this will be the zipper template. Lay that on the right side of your lining piece about an inch and a half away from the top. Then go ahead and sew along the outline. Once you've done sewing, you want to cut the center line and the diagonal lines as well. When you get to the corner, just be careful not to cut through the stitches. Turn this piece to the wrong side, open up the cut lines and then go ahead and give this a quick press. Once you've done that, you want to turn the pocket piece to the wrong side, smooth everything out and then you want to press that as well. And you're going to end up with something like this. Now take your zipper. Your zipper should be measuring at least 6 inches long. Mine is a slight longer here, it's about 8 inches. As usual, I want to take my basting tape and place that 
on the edges of my zipper tapes peel the top layer off and then I'm going to place my zipper template on top of my zipper so you're gonna end up with something like this now go ahead and sew all along the edges Turn this piece to the wrong side, trim off the excess zipper. Now take the second zipper pocket piece and then lay that right side down. Now go ahead and sew all around with half an inch of seam allowance. Now we're going to attach the magnetic snaps. As usual, we will install the female magnetic snap at the back of the lining and the male magnetic snap will be installed at the front side of the lining. Measure one and a half inch from the top of your lining piece and then put a little mark there and do the same with the wrong side as well. Take a scrap of fusible fleece or interfacing and then you want to fuse that on the wrong side of the lining where you put the mark. Once you've done that, take one of the washer, place the washer where the center hole is sitting right on the mark and then trace the two side holes. Now use seam ripper and then cut through the two lines that you just traced. Just be careful not to overdo it though. Now I'm going to take my female magnetic snap since this is going to be the back of the lining. Insert the two prongs into the two holes that you just created. Then from the wrong side you want to insert the washer through the prongs. Then you can either use pliers or use your thumbs to push the prongs to the side. And that's it, the magnetic snap is done. Now you want to do the same with the front lining piece. Once all of your lining pieces are ready to go, go ahead and assemble them exactly the same way you did the exterior shell. So here's my lining gusset. I cut this exactly the same size as the exterior gusset. And then I'm going to sew this in exact same manner as I did the exterior shell. And this is how my lining turned out. Now that I've got both of my exterior and interior pieces ready to go, it's time to do the final assembling. First, I'm going to turn this interior piece to the wrong side, just like so, and then I'm going to insert this into my exterior shell. Match all the side seams and then secure everything with fabric clips. So I'm going to finish this bag with binding. So here I've got a binding strip measuring two and a half inches wide and I will install this binding pretty much the same way as I bind a quilt. First I'm going to align the edges of the binding with the edges of the bag. So I leave about a couple inches of tail from the starting point and I like to start from the side. Then I'm going to sew all around the edges with quarter inch of seam allowance. I stopped sewing about 4 inches from my starting point and then I'm gonna overlap this strip. There are many ways you can overlap the strips but I'm gonna do the easier way. So I'm going to measure half an inch of overlapping. So here I've got my sewing gauge and then I'm going to put a little half an inch point mark there and then I'm gonna take my scissors and cut. Now I'm going to pinch the back a little bit from this side so I will have enough room to sew my strips together and place a fabric clip right there. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to lay the strips right side together just like so and then sew with quarter inch of seam allowance. So you will end up with something like this and I simply press the seams open. Alright, now you can go ahead and finish the binding with your favorite method. I finish mine with hand stitching. If you don't like binding, you can skip the binding. Uh, simply do the usual finishing off back. So you want to sew your lining, leave an opening at the bottom, like about seven to eight inches opening, and then turn your back inside out. So I'm pretty sure you know um, the whole process. And then go ahead and top stitch and voila, your back is done. And that's all I have for you today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And I shall see you next time with another fun sewing project. Goodbye.